Okay. So here we are with Jane Doe, our, our favorite um, sample student. And, and Jane, this is her dashboard. You should be all familiar with the dashboard by now. And on our dashboard, you can see that in the next 30 days, that she has two assignments to complete, one of them being for the LMS exercise and the other an essay for the mental health continuum test. So we're going to look at submitting an essay here. Now, there's a number of ways we can do this. One, we can click on the add submission from the dashboard to, to, to submit, or we can go to the actual course related to it. In this case, we're just going to click to the course, mental health test continuum, and we scroll on down we'll see here's the essay here upload your assignment and then there's an assignment details and overview in this instance we're looking at an essay which represents 60 percent of the marks for this particular module so we're going to go ahead now with the the process of submitting our document we have our document um created and we saved the document to our OneDrive. so we're going to click on the essay here now and it's going to open up um a new dialog box and this one here is telling us what our current submission status is, which means there's been no attempt for this so far, and that there are 24 days left and nine hours to, to make a submission. Um, and we have the add submission button down here. So we're gonna click on the add submission. So the next page we're brought to is the actual page where we're going to upload our document from. Now you'll see there's a, a box that has to be ticked here. And this box is basically you accepting the terms for the submission related to original material, etc. Now, um, it's told us that there's a maximum file size of 20 megabytes, and that's usually enough to cover the vast majority of essay type documents. And where you're submitting other types of material that may require larger files, you will be allowed uh, a, a larger allowance for file upload. In this instance, you're only allowed to upload one document because there's only one document associated with this particular exercise. For other exercises, there may be more than one document required. And in that case, you will be, be allowed for the number of documents required. So there's a number of ways of uploading files. We can drag and drop a file if we can see our file. So if we have a file over on our desktop here, we can drag and drop it in there and it will be submitted. Um, but the, the method we're gonna recommend is that you use the file picker. That's this very first box here, file picker box. We're gonna click on that. And it opens up a, a dialog box, the file picker box. This allows you to uh, uh, select your, your file for upload. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. The upload file option, which is the one we're seeing here, allows us to browse our computer. And I'm just gonna click on that just to show you very briefly. It allows me to browse the computer and look for the file if it's on the physical computer that I'm on. But as we have recommended already to you in other parts of this particular course, we, we um, would like you to store your files, if at all possible, on your OneDrive. And the reason for this is that your OneDrive files would be available to you from anywhere, anytime, any computer, um, and so, uh, they also protect your files and help you keep copies of your files. So we're going to click on the OneDrive and we're going to click on my OneDrive in this instance is Jane Doe's OneDrive and it's going to open up on Jane's OneDrive here and you can see that uh, she has a document prepared for her the mental health continuum called Jane Doe mental health essay doc. Um, the wording of documents is entirely up to you um, once they're submitted to the system they will be associated with with you and only you so there's no issue with that. Um, and the document itself, you should have your name and you should have your student ID number. So we're gonna select this document as the document that we want to upload. I'm gonna click on select this file. So now the file has been selected and it's here for submission. That's the file we're submitting, Jane Doe Mental Health Continuum essay. If we're happy with that, all we have to do now is just click on save changes. This will bring us back to our very original dialog box, which is the submission status um, for the essay. And you see here that this is attempt number one. It has been submitted for grading, not marked yet. The due date's still there, the due date time, and the date modified, which is when you submitted it first, is there. Um, and there's the file submission. Now, within the next five to 10 minutes, that file is currently being processed by our very site software and very site software is going to come back with what we call a similarity score. So if there, there are parts of Jane Doe's document that have been copied and pasted from other sources without being referenced, etc., and they'll be highlighted so that you can be aware of that and make changes if necessary. So we're going to give that a few minutes, and at the end of the few minutes, we'll come back to it to see what the, the score is on the document. 
Okay, so we're back kind of just a little over five minutes later and uh, we're going to click back into uh, Jane Doe's essay submission. Now we see a slight change in the screen. We still have the same information about the submission, etc. But we see now that um, the document that we submitted, Jane Doe Mental Health Essay, um, has a similarity index of 13%. This is indicating that some of the material matches um, other people's material or other material found elsewhere on the web. So if you want to see or get a report and you can as a student, you can do this just as easily as a lecturer. You can click on the similarity link and it'll actually open up very site, which will show you the report. So here's the, here's the Jane Doe essay here. And here are the matches. So this is the information within this document that represents a 13% similarity. Now just to give you an idea of, of, of what the colours mean, if we just click on the all matches here you'll see. Anything in red is a, a high match, anything in, in orange is a medium match and yellow is a low match. So we have one high match here and then we have uh, three uh, medium matches. Now, you may decide as a student, or Jane may decide as a student, that she wants to make changes here um, so that she can cut down her 13% mark. Now, you can't do that from in the report. It's only indicating and showing you where some of your, your uh, mistakes are. You can, of course, download this report for review later. Hit the download button here. There's a tutorial on how you can use um, these reports and get the best from them. And you'll also see down here that the report is not yet complete. So we've come back after five minutes, and this is the result it's got after five minutes. It continues to scan in the background. I'll just click here. So it's, it's doing an external search engine scan. It's going through a number of external resources, including libraries and repositories, to see if there's any further similarities to be found. But we're just going to work with the similarities that it's already come up with here. So we have this report indicating. now. Jane may, on reflection, look at it and say, well, okay, this red one here, what, why, why is that uh, red? So she looks at Dr. Costa Font stated, we found evidence that social pressure through peer shape. So this is actually a direct quote from, from Dr. Costa, and she may realize that she forgot to put inverted commas in. When you place inverted commas around um, any content, it, it, it's ignored by the this, this, this scan software because it's taken as a direct quote, and therefore, um, even if a match is found, it won't come up as a similarity because you've already indicated that you've copied this direct quote from whatever source it might be. And she may discover that some of the other ones are also um, direct quotes. What you can do in that instance is you can go back into your original document, make the changes, and upload again. So in the next video, I'm going to show you that process of changing the document, and we'll stick with Jane's original document of changing the document and then uploading it again so um, it can go to the, the plagiarism scanner again to see if, if it's made any difference to the result. So uh, although uh, in this instance we're looking at a score of, of only 13% uh, and, and on the plagiarism score and that's quite low and that would be quite acceptable for material that's been submitted, um, you, you may find yourself, you know, that you if you forgot to put the inverted commas around the paragraph, you may come back with a, a much higher score. Or if you've copied and pasted something from a website and you haven't um, cited it in any way, it'll come back with a much higher score. The exercise that you have to perform um, in relation to uh, the LMS um, course here um, and the one that you actually have to submit yourself, that will come back with a much higher score than 13% because it's been structured to do that and allow you the opportunity to make the changes. So in the next video I will take you through um, how you go about um, making the changes and resubmitting your work.